What's up, family? I'm DB, and this is Cut Culture, where we highlight barbers and discuss all things from lifestyle, education, clients, and products, and anything that pushes the culture forward. Welcome. And today, I am in the Originals Barbershop with the owner, my brother Carl. What's, what's going up? on, Carl? Say what's up to the family, man. What's up, y'all? What's... Hey, so check this out. Today, we have like a two-part a two part show. It's a little something different. So um, you're gonna have to check out the second part um, once they get released. Once they get released, um, the first thing we're gonna talk about. One of the things we want to talk about is commission versus booth rent. And for the second part of the show, we're gonna talk about um, why do barbers charge so much? <laughs> why do we charge so much? But we'll get into all that a little bit later. First thing we're gonna talk about is commission versus booth rent. So, but before we get into that, Carl, what's up? How long you been barber, man? And did did you did you know that you wanted to become a barber? Like, uh, you know, uh, starting been, out. I've been bar. I've been, I've been a barber for twenty years. Okay. Licensed uh, in the state of Nevada. Um, of course, I have a couple years behind um, in the in the bathroom, um, in the locker rooms. <laughs> um, I've been a barber for twenty years in the state of Nevada. Uh, but I have some years, you know, uh, being mobile barber five years before being licensed and all. Okay. But I only, I, I like counting only the, the licensed years is 20, right? And uh, how I got into barbering, um, it it, it, it kind of just grew on me. Um, I, I, I was playing ball and uh, of course I just couldn't get to the shop like everyone else, <laughs> right? So yeah. I eventually just started messing, messing my brother head up in the, in the bathroom. Right. And uh, oh, yeah. I developed a, a passion for it. So um, I realized I had a little talent, started cutting people around the neighborhood. And then uh, it was it just started being more and more of a habit for me just to cut some of my close friends and family. Okay, so when, once you graduated barber school, did you go straight from barber school to owning the shop or you went straight from barber school to having your own shop? I mean, no, I went to to going to a shop. No, right when I got my license, uh, I, I went to a shop. Okay. Um, I felt that I needed to um, find um, just the culture and just get a hold of the culture first. So, okay. only way I knew I can do that is by finding uh, other barbers, like-minded bar barbers like myself. Okay. So, um, right when I went to a shop, um, it was Studio One Barbershop. It was a. Uh, it was in the heart of in the heart of Las Vegas. Is what, is what okay. I call it. The and that was twenty years ago. That was, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was 20 years ago. I, um, and uh, the, heart of Las, the, the heart of Las Vegas is on, is on the west side. That's oh, right. where the people is. Right. You know, not where the tourists is, not where the right. strip is. The heart of, of Las Vegas. So that's like what, MLK area? MLK, yeah. Owens. Okay. You know, yeah. In case y'all don't know. Yeah, yeah, in case <laughs> you don't know. Some of the landmarks over there. But um, I started um, in, the heart of the, in the heart of the Las Vegas. And... Uh, I got under some really, really good mentors that really had some years of, you know, experience in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, they were born and raised, they were natives as well. So um, once I got, you know, my clientele flow, my financial flow kind of going in, kind of steady, uh, that's when I realized that I might be able to venture off and, and, and be able to uh, work at another shop as a manager, mm -hmm. get some, you know, get some more responsibility underneath my belt. Okay. Uh, did that happen? Did it did. It, okay. It did. It did. I ended up um, going and working at Masterpiece Barber School, a barbershop. Okay. Marcus. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when he decided to leave Studio One and open up Masterpiece, uh, he gave me, he, he offered me the manager position, and I was all for it. That's what's up. I was all for it, um, and uh, with that, you know, allowed me to kind of have some responsibilities, kind of structure myself as a manager, as a mentor, right, to other barbers. Uh, I did that for uh, almost 11 years. Wow. Yeah, 11 years I worked at Masterpiece One. And uh, uh, my next venture was opening up my own shop. And so, that's this shop? Yes. Okay. Yes. And this is a nice shop, man. Y'all really need to check this out. So, <laughs> Appreciate it, man. So we'll have the address and all of that good stuff um, a little later, but it's a really nice shop. So what this journey been like, man? Like just... Oh, man. <laughs> um, it's been... It's been it's been great. I mean, for, uh, as far as experience wise, okay, um, you're gonna get your ups and downs, which you you kind of got to know what you're signing up for, right? So, um, being a, a, a business owner, um, running a running a barbershop, mm -hmm. um, working in the barbershop that you're you know you're actually the owner of, 
Um, and then trying to grow it and, right. grow, and grow barbers around you is a difficult task um, that you have to kind of, you kind of continue doing research on being a mentor, being an educator, mm -hmm. and then also your, 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 your profession, your craft as well. You want to educate yourself on every, the whole all around uh, barber, art right. of barbering, right? right? Okay. You want to continue educating yourself on that as well. And as far as being a businessman, and right. business owner, right? So that journey um, by itself is, um, it's been challenging, um, but it's grown, it, it grew me as a man. Okay. So one thing I want to ask you, so I think this is real cool, man. And this is like big, the name of the shop. Yeah. So the name of the shop, is it the originals or originals? It is the original barbershop. Okay. Yeah. So that's big, man. I, I, I just like the name. So how did you come up with the name, the original barbershop? You know, when I was searching for a name, I was looking at something that was going to stick out that was not an Im imitation. Okay. That was not a duplicate copy right. of something. And when I kind of did my research on that, what kept, kept on coming out was originality, original, mm. right? Um, <clears throat> me looking up uh, those terms and those, those um, words, it, that stuck out, you know? And then so, um, from, yeah, from, <laughs> from there on out, I felt that, you know, everybody that came in here um, as a barber, is an artist and everybody does techniques differently absolutely because we're artists right same results it's supposed to be the technique. same experience right but everybody is their own artist so with that everybody it re really is original not just the original barber uh, right uh, yeah right so i it, like that so it's yeah. not just me it's, it's yeah. everybody everybody yeah. I'm, I'm 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 original you're you're original right right right, right. and so we we kind of we, we see that in, in all of our barbers that come in, you know, and mm -hmm. even how we develop and, and everybody grows on their own, you know, they start be, you know, having their own character. You know, we don't all think alike. I like that. Uh, I yeah. like that. The original. Yeah. The original. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's get into this meat and potatoes. Yeah. Let's do it. Part of the, uh, part of the, the conversation. So commission versus booth rent. Have you ever dealt with commission? So, um, so everybody understand w within a barbershop commission is basically as easy as I can under I can explain it is if you're a new barber say we're gonna just use new barbers if you're a new barber you coming into the barbershop for the first time straight out of school um, you may be on uh, what they call commission so basically when you cut ahead say the commission is 50 50 50 percent of the your, 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 your money your haircut goes to the, the shop 50 percent stays to you and obviously booth rent will be one flat rate that you will pay at the end of the week, right? So you got it. All right, so commission, <clears throat> some advantages and disadvantages of, of commission and booth rent. Let's start with commission. So um, have you ever dealt with commission as far as having, being on commission yourself or having any of your barbers on commission? I have no experience in working or, um, or operating a commission-based shop. Okay. Um, I've done research on it. Um, I've, I've asked around because I, you know, being a shop owner, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I want to know why would you structure your business as a commission-based shop. Right. So I, I've, I've got great relationships with shop owners that do mm -hmm. run a commission-based shop, and I see the pros and I see the cons as far as my opinion goes. Right. So I always felt I wanted to build a relationship with these guys. I didn't want these guys to come in on a commission-based bar, mm -hmm. um, commission-based rate and realize that the more money that they make, the more money the shop is getting. Okay. Right. So, so in, in starting barbers at booth rent, I'm assuming that, um, you start them pretty low initially. Initially I do give, we give, give them a break when they first, depending on, so it's all about the individual. Right. 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 right? Um, if I know this, this barber is coming over and, and pretty much is not going to take too many walk-ins. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give him too much of a break because right. he's basically saying that he's going to come over. He's going to have his own With clientele yeah. already. Yeah. So if you're a barber coming in, you established, look, man, I already got 500 clients. No problem. Yeah. I'll give you uh, two weeks to get your get your clientele in, uh, right. half booth rent this week, and then full next week. Right, okay. Cool. Whatever they are, free booth rent this week, right. half, 75%, 100%. Right, but if you're straight out of school, I'm gonna. I'm, we, we got a program for that. Okay. All right. We have a program. All right. So it's a it's a different breakdown depending on if you're a brand new guy, mm -hmm. brand new barber, 
or versus a established absolutely barber. so i have had um that's that's good that, that sounds real good um so i have had experience with commission and being on commission and, and all that good stuff so uh i started in san antonio texas mm-hmm. um at a shop king's main barbershop i'll be in san antonio so oh, yeah. i love <laughs> so san antonio. i started at a, a a shop that was commission based and it was which i didn't like i ain't gonna fry. i didn't yeah. like commission at first but i'll say this i think as a new barber commission is not a bad thing for the barber starting now if you don't have a client base at all and it's also i'll say like a new shop so the shop i started in was a was a brand new like we all started in that shop at the same time and the owner was not he was an absentee owner he, he wasn't a barber yeah so for him it was pretty much an investment mm-hmm. so we were left to basically kind of run the shop yeah um and we were all at the time we were all new barbers mm-hmm. so the, the the shop itself didn't have a lot of traffic this just gives you some backstory so, so starting off um it was good for us initially mm-hmm. because we didn't owe say two hundred dollars at the end of the week right and maybe each day we only cut two three heads that's that's the only reason i would see somebody doing a well, right a barber going into a commission-based shop right now um, the problem with commission you know. from that is it okay it starts good but as you build your clientele yeah the more money you make now the more the shopping. more money you paying out so you yeah. kind of feel like as a barber um you being shorted you're gonna get that yeah with pretty much all barbers eventually <laughs> I, I believe that even I, on blueprint no in the commi- oh, in commission yeah 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 you're right no, no experience yeah. and no in, in, mm-hmm. right i would just think that eventually the, the barber would eventually think you know what i'm gonna go into a studio right you know or i'm going to go you know i'm gonna get my own shop but for if a brand is already built mm-hmm. and they are booking your appointments for you you're coming in and it's plug and play for you mm-hmm. then i can see that i can see i can see where the brand keeps the leverage of saying you can leave but we have the books right and 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 i and, and barbershops are being ran like that right they, they have the books so when you come in you have we have all we have all the books we have all the data mm-hmm. so everybody that was booking with you db we got the information you say you don't want to work here tomorrow we're going to move all your clients to tommy hey tommy got them and he's going to get them because I'm, you know what db is no longer here right right so it is it is success in a commission-based shop mm-hmm. i just my purpose running a shop my my passion running a shop is not based on that right i don't want to see a, a i don't want to see my i don't want to see my barbers leave like that right you know i, I want to see them come and i want them longevity not absolutely working for me right i i just want to see them i want to build relationships with them so <clears throat> so um definitely i agree with you you definitely will get tired of being on commission you know to say the least so it has to be a point um that the that the owner uh and and barber come to an agreement that has to be some common ground where you understand at at a certain point we're gonna have to go to to booth rent. you know, look this is just our at my experience and our opinions right? yeah absolutely so you know so there, there's man there's so many ways there's mm-hmm. so many different ways to skin a cat right absolutely so there's there's so many ways where you know they're still up and running so it's mm-hmm. not like you, you know booth rent and commission shops or they're both being ran so so in in whether you run a commission-based shop or a shop that's that's based off of booth rent so how important is it whether regardless of which uh type of uh structure you have in your shop how important is it building that relationship with the barbers as a shop owner you know i try to just build a relationship organically with, with the barbers i just want to help them grow at professional wise and um business wise okay you know i just want to be a big brother a mentor to the to the barbers that's just and when i feel that barbers grow out of being in a sh- in, in one particular area or just want to change of pace mm-hmm. i tip my head off to that you know um uh just 
don't cut off your, your ties with your relationship with, with the relationship that you build. Mm -hmm. You know, when you decide you want to be able to, to run your own shop and do your own thing, <clears throat> just show the shop love and show respect to you know, the people that's you know taking out their time to help you grow. Right. That's it. It's not it's not about nobody leaving your shop because the brand's gonna speak for itself. Mm -hmm. If you do right by the brand, you do right by your profession, it's gonna do right by you. So if we're helping our barbers and barbers are being inspired by what's going on at the original barbershop, that's a blessing. Right. You know, I would rather barbers leave here. I want only barbers to leave here and open up their own shop. It's, it's, it's never a bad thing. You just, it's unfortunate that you might get a barber that might just sporadically leave. Right. You know, and that's, and that, you never want that. So I don't ever want that, you know, but. What I do want is I would love barbers to open up their own if they if they ever did leave. Yeah, I feel you. That's good though, man. Um, so your barbers come in here, they learn, um, they grow, mm -hmm. and and they expand on their own, which Absolutely. which is which is probably the goal of most barbers. You know, I did a uh, and which so they come become shop owners. So I, I did a, a video. Actually, y'all got to check that out. If you haven't seen the, the video of me and JoJo, uh, JoJo the barber, you definitely got to check that out about barbershop ownership. Um, and I mean, so, you know, once they once they run out there, I'm pretty sure you'll always still, since you was mentoring them anyway, you'll always be here to be like, hey, so this is what you need to do to set up your space. I still I still talk to barbers that used to work here. Yeah. I still do. Um, and it's, it's a really healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. It was I'm pretty much um, a lot of the barbers that left, that that's left, I, we haven't had many. But we still we still keep in contact. We still communicate with them, and I, I just still want to always be that ear for them, okay. you know, so they can call and, and still say, "Hey, man, this is what's going on with, you know, uh, uh, me growing my clientele. What do you think about this? Or um, how's the fam doing? Or it, it like I said, it's a it's a fraternity at the end of the day. Okay, you know, so. So whether you're on commission, whether you're on booth rent, mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you definitely need to 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 enjoy where you are, and it should be learning something in that space. So, so that's gonna be uh, the shop, the, the show for the day. Like I said, it's two parts. So we coming right back. We coming right back with uh, why do we charge so much? <laughs> so piggybacking off the commission and booth rent. Matter of fact, where is a, where can everybody find you on? So give, give everybody, get a family, your, your social media uh, pages and your, your, your shop address. I sure will. Uh, you can find me on uh, Carl Little underscore the barber on IG, and, uh, as well as the, the original barbershop LV. Um, we also have uh, underscore original lifestyle um, underscore uh, for apparel and merch. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find us at. That's what's up, man. Hey, so appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. Hey, until next time, thank you for coming out. Hey, um, maybe next time I'll be in your shop in your city. But until then, love, peace, and hair grease. Salute. Yeah.